All right. In this lesson, we are going to see how to make the crowd system. So, first things first. We are going to take our runner here and duplicate it by pressing Ctrl D. Move it a little bit on the right. Create another one. Move it a little bit on the left, maybe. And now check if they all move at the same time. So let's hit play. Okay. Perfect. When controlling our player, they do move at the same time indeed. Nice. Okay, I'm just gonna increase the slide speed here slightly. Maybe from one to three. So that we... Okay, now it's better. Okay, perfect. Maybe even a little bit more. So six. Nice. So now let's select these three and duplicate them a bunch of time. So just to see that there are many instances of the runners, we can select them and move them a little bit. All right. Perfect. So now we have 9, 12, 12 runners. We are going to see how we can place them by code. Okay. So let's open Brave here. All right. Perfect. So we are going to do arts with math, guys. Nice. I present you the Fermat Spiral and especially the Fermat Spiral using the golden angle. We are going to try and set up an algorithm to place our runners in the same pattern. This pattern can be seen in nature in the sunflower or in the daisy, like here. All right, perfect. So let's try and do this. To do that, we need the radius of the spiral, which is going to be equals to C, so a random constant, multiplied by the square root of the current index of the runner. And here the angle is going to be equals to the current index of the runner, multiplied by the golden ratio. So let's try and do that. Let's jump back to Unity and create a new script in the scripts folder. Call it crowd system. Okay, cool. Now we are going to drag our crowd system and drop it onto the player. Nice. Let's open it. So just to try things out here, let's place our runners on a line. It's just a test actually. So let's say, let's create a full loop. So we are going to loop through all our runners. So let's say transform dot child count. This is the amount of children of this transform. So basically here the transform is the player and it has 12 children. Okay, nice. So the X value of the X position of our runner will be I, so the index multiplied by one. Again, it's just a test. So now we can say that transform that get child. So we are getting the child I. So from zero to 11. OK, dot position, but not position, dot local position, because we want them to move with the player equals vector three dot right. So the vector one zero zero times X. OK, perfect. So let's jump back to Unity and hit play. Nice. Now we can see that our runners are on a line. Nice. We now know how to place our runners. So let's use the Fermat Spiral. Okay. Let's create a new elements header. And let's add a new serialized field called golden angle. Or just maybe angle. Okay. We can add another one called radius. All right. Cool. And now let's create a new method that will help us place our runners. So let's make it private. Void place runners. Sorry, runners. Okay. Now we want another method which will help us get the position of the runner. So it will return a vector three. So it will return the local position of the runner. Get runner position, or let's say local position instead. And it will take an index as an argument, an integer, sorry. Uh, it will be the runner index. Okay, perfect. So how are we going to do that? 
So we know that the x position, the x local position of the runner will be something like, let's go back here, c, so a constant, multiplied by the square root of the index. So it's going to be c, so let's say the radius, times the square root. So we are going to use the mathf library. So sqrt is the square root of the index and using some trigonometry lessons from college or earlier we know that we can convert polar coordinates into cartesian coordinates like we are doing right now we, you don't need to remember that by heart you just need to understand a little bit and if you still have some questions you can drop them in the comment section so here we're going to say mathf.cosine of mathf dot degree to radians so it's just a conversion ratio here times the index times the angle that we want because the angle is in degrees here and we want to convert it into radians because mathf dot cosine uses radians so let's grab this line copy it and paste it so now we want to modify the z local position of the runner so here nothing changes but here mathf.cosine we want to use the sine of this angle okay cool now we can return a new vector 3 with our brand new made x and z values perfect now to place the runners we are going to grab this loop maybe remove it from here and paste it here nice we can create a new vector 3 called child local position and set it to uh, get runner posi local position of index i okay now we can grab this and paste it here so now we are just assigning this position we've just made to our child so to our runner then we can call the place runners method into the update method. Okay, let's jump back to Unity. So for the angle, we are going to use 137.508. So let's place it here. Okay, make, let's make sure it's, just, it's a dot. And for the radius for now, let's just say 1. Uh, I'm going to prevent the runners from going forward and hit play. Okay, let's see, let's see if that works. It seems that it's working. Perfect, cool, nice. Let's try and add more and more runners. So select all of them, Control D, Control D, Control D. Perfect. Okay, you can play a little bit with this. You can change the angle here and make some really nice patterns. Wonderful. All right. Cool. Let's set it back to the golden angle. And here I can reduce the radius, maybe dot five or dot four. Yeah, it seems cool. Now we have a crowd. Okay, perfect. And using this algorithm allows us to prevent overlapping. Now you can see that no runner is on top of the other. So that's cool. Okay, perfect. Nice. Now. After doing that, we can add a crowd counter on top of the player to know how many runners we have in our group. Let's do that in the next lesson.